Welcome to another segment of the Economic Development Tribute in Maryland, the 2020 edition. Today, we're pleased to be with six county economic development leaders who will be discussing a new collaboration they formed in 2019, the Maryland National Capital Region Economic Development Alliance creates a partnership for cooperation on economic development efforts within their region. That region includes six counties, and we have with us today, Vernon Thompson and Larry Tweel from Howard County. Larry's on the phone. We have Dave Iannucci from Prince George's County. We have Ben Burge from Anne Arundel County. We have Ben Wu from Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation. Ebony Stocks is with us from Prince George's County. Darrell Brown and Marcia Keith from Charles County. We also have Helen Profiter joining us from Frederick County. So to get us started, I'll ask a couple of questions and um, I'll toss them out to each person. So Dave, let's start with you. Um, this month is the one year anniversary of your first lunch together with this crowd uh, to form and discuss a formal arrangement. Uh, you wanna tell us how things have unfolded since that first meeting? Well, thank you, Pam. And it's really good to be with my friends and colleagues on this call and we appreciate what Mita is doing. Um, it was really actually somewhere in the, the early fall a year ago, pre-COVID, that I made a series of phone calls to these, these uh, ladies and gentlemen on the call and kind of explore the idea of us getting together. We actually had a conference call before we had the lunch in the middle of November of 2019 uh, at the hotel near the University of Maryland. And it was a really fascinating lunch. A lot of the folks had not met each other. And we just put it on the table, the idea of uh, exploring the idea of the, the six counties working together regionally uh, to explore what in a pre-code environment, it seems like the, the old days, but uh, to explore marketing together and working together and ways that we could cooperate on, on business attraction and retention. Uh, and this also to share the experiences of being managers of economic development organizations, the, uh, the trials and tribulations of that. And so we did have the, of that very successful lunch and everyone was encouraged to promote that event uh, on their own social media, which we did. Um, and then we began the process of uh, essentially drafting a written statement no, with no idea that COVID was going to intervene. We expected to have a nice signing ceremony uh, that was going to be in Montgomery County. Uh, as I recall, we were going to do that first signing ceremony. COVID interfered, of course, and we did it virtually. Um, and COVID really changed uh, the organization. Uh, ironically, probably has made us stronger and more cohesive, maybe faster than we might have otherwise have uh, achieved that. Uh, we get together regularly to, uh, to share the experience of being managers of the economic development organizations with staff that are stressed out and working under this uh, new environment. Uh, but it's been a wonderful opportunity to exchange information on programs, on challenges in dealing with COVID. We've all stood up programs in our individual counties uh, to deal with businesses that are affected by COVID, uh, how to set those up, technical issues, what we're experiencing in our local economy. And I've been really gratified by the comments about my friends and colleagues here about how valuable this once in a week meeting has become and everyone makes it a must uh, on their calendar. So I, I, I find that really important that everyone goes out of the way to have uh, to join these meetings. And again, we're all in the same boat and we're trying to, trying to swim against a tough stream right now, a tough current right now, but it's, I think we're all stronger for that. And I look forward to how this organization continues to grow. Thank you, Dave. And I'm gonna ask, um, I, we have Larry on the phone and Vernon here in person. So I'll, you guys can double team this if you like. Um, I wanna ask you to elaborate a little bit um, on that partnership and how it's made a difference because as Dave pointed out, you have met every week um, since the beginning of um, the year. And uh, I know that you've been supportive of one another. So you want to elaborate a little bit on how that's made a difference? Uh, yeah, Pam, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. This is, uh, this is Larry. Um, you know, particularly, I mean, it was, it was a great idea, uh, you know, from, from the start. But particularly during the COVID uh, times, we've, we've been able to learn the best practices on how to implement the grants. Uh, we've, you know, 
uh, we've pointed out, you know, to each other, the, the, the trap doors we've found along the way. And we, I, I just, it really was a, uh, just a great experience. The collaboration, um, you know, just, I think really helped, uh, each of us in our, in our jurisdictions, you know, provide the best assistance to the, to the businesses. But, you know, what I, what I, uh, I think value the most is, you know, we come to this, uh, meeting every every week and there's there, there's sometimes there's an agenda sometimes we'll have a guest uh, a guest speaker in or or something like that but just the the organic nature of the the discussion and the uh you know just the honest collaboration that has that has grown from uh uh from this from this group it just really has been uh, a great uh, a great value and a great tool to to, uh, you know, personally and, and for the organization. Thank you. Vernon, you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'll kind of jump on on the COVID side of things. It, it really forced us into or allowed us into a focus uh, that that it, something to look forward to every week, just in terms of not only the collaboration, cooperation, but almost the commiseration. You know, I mean, we, we've all been kind of pedaled to the metal for the last, you know, eight months. Uh, and it was just good to hear what everybody else was up to, the challenges that they were facing, both politically, mechanically, you know, organizationally. And I think really everybody's been able to share enough about what they're doing with the, with the others that we've all been able to benefit from what other people have had to say. And, and, and in terms of <coughs> the way organizations, you know, come together, uh, this is about as good as I've seen because, A, nobody's in charge. B, nobody's getting paid, you know, <laughs> so so we're only in it for for the camaraderie. And 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 I think that's that's huge. That's great. Thank you, Vernon. Um, you know, it's, throughout this this year, um, as you've come together, I know that you're also working toward um, some other cooperative efforts like da gathering data about the region and, and really growing that identity for yourselves. You worked toward um, a survey recently, uh, Ben Wu in Montgomery. Uh, you wanna tell us a little bit about that survey that you uh, are working on with the group? Sure, hey, th thanks Pam uh, for putting this together and also for the support and participation that you and Mita give to our regional alliance. I think this survey is a perfect example of what the regional alliance members can do together and then collaborate. When COVID hit, uh, we were all interested to understand the impacts of COVID on our businesses, uh, especially since uh, there were ramifications in all various industry sectors and uh, we were all trying to figure out how best to help. Uh, and so there was a belief that it would be very useful uh, if we could have a survey of businesses uh, that would be able to give us a sense of the top priorities, how they're doing, uh, and then we could take that data and also inform and educate our lawmakers and policymakers about how best to move forward. So in Montgomery County, we created uh, a three-year longitudinal study uh, to try to better understand uh, COVID-19 uh, business adaptation practices. Uh, and so in our weekly meetings, uh, I reference uh, what we were doing, uh, and there seemed to be a great deal of interest in the other five jurisdictions as well. Uh, and so uh, since we were already beginning to undertake that effort, you know, there's a sizable cost uh, that is required in order to pass scientific rigor, in order to set up uh, a survey. Uh, and since we were bearing those costs already uh, in Montgomery County, uh, we suggested that maybe we could have everybody uh, in our region also participate. Uh, and that was also not just to include uh, our alliance members, but it made the survey much more powerful and impactful. If we could not just look at one jurisdiction, but look at collectively the six jurisdictions that make up the national capital region uh, in Maryland. Uh, and so it was a benefit to Montgomery County. It was a benefit to our region. Uh, and uh, we were able through our alliance weekly meetings uh, to be able to uh, understand uh, that this survey could be very useful. Uh, and so this is a perfect example of our communication, 
uh, our ability to learn from each other, uh, to be able to share best practices uh, in which we can then create these initiatives and these action items uh, that will benefit not just our jurisdictions, but the region at large. Uh, and so I think the survey is a perfect example of what has evolved generically uh, through uh, our weekly meetings uh, and our sense of collectiveness uh, in trying to, as a region, try to advance ourselves and move forward together. Thank you, Ben. Um, I wanted to see if uh, we could get an answer to this question about looking forward to 2021. I know that you've all been working so hard all year and, and may not have looked too far out into the future, but um, maybe Ben Burge can uh, talk a little bit, Ben Burge from Anne Arundel County can talk a little bit about have you considered how the Alliance might change or grow in 2021? Well, thanks, Pam. Um, as the newest member of this group since uh, July 1st, um, I think even if we did nothing, it would seem like it's changing and growing to me. But um, I think there's a lot of uh, really interesting aspects of what we've been doing so far that we could um, really take in, in different directions beyond a weekly meeting format. Um, I think that one of the things we've talked about is um, on the heels of looking at some common metrics and uh, uh, that, that uh, we're, we're all measuring and we're all looking at is possibly finding some common measures and pulling those together, providing, um, providing this information in a single spot and then Pulling it, pulling it together for other regions to, to look at, not necessarily to compare and contrast, but just to, to see how those regions can also benefit from maybe working together when they see the type of things we work on and share as a group. I think what's, um, what's interesting about this group is that in order to move forward, it's, it's not about growing um, and adding to our, our list, but it's about um, working together and being a strong group, being able to take some of the work we do collectively, whether it's the survey, whether it's some of these uh, common metrics we're gathering, and then be a good example for other regions that might want to pull together a similar group. Um, Maryland seems to naturally gather in different geographical groups. Um, and I think if some of those, uh, some of those regions saw the work we were doing and we made it available to them, uh, I think other organizations like this would, would start up and grow. Um, I know that uh, MEDA has given us a great opportunity to have some space on its website for us to land some of the hyperlinks to the work we're doing as a group um, or some of the projects we're doing maybe in our, our individual jurisdictions but are part of things that we're all doing simultaneously. And having that central repository of information not only helps us as an organization, but like I said, it could help other regions, um, other economic development organizations in these regions pull together and see how easy it could be um, if you're working together on these things. I know that uh, having been part of similar uh, efforts like this, uh, some successful, some not, one of the real strengths of this group is that the leadership of the group and the membership of the group are, is the same, uh, sort of to Vernon's point that, you know, there's no, there's no head of the group. Um, but I think that continuing to work together and, and pulling together these collaborations and these uh, commonalities of things that we're working on and data that we're gathering and putting it forward for others to see and not for just us to discuss on a weekly basis, I think, uh, could send some of what we do into a different direction moving forward next year. Thanks, Ben. Um, now, I, I want to ask um, Darrell and Marcia are both here from um, Charles County. And um, I know that you're in the Southern Maryland region as well. Would you rec recommend um, an organized formal arrangement uh, for other regions considering your location in Southern Maryland as well? Uh, hi, Pam. Uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, the answer to your question is yes. And I cannot um, overemphasize just how relevant and important 
uh, the regional collaboration has been over the past um, seven months and even pr prior to that. Uh, you've heard us all say that we participated on weekly calls and exchanged information and ideas and talked about best practices and, and particularly as it relates to the implementation of the CARES Act. Um, we've also shared frustrations uh, with one another. You, you've heard that um, from, from those of us who've already spoken. Um, and I have said, uh, since I've been director in Charles County Economic Development for the past five years, on day one, I've, I've said consistently, publicly and privately, that those uh, counties, those organizations that are engaged in collaboration are those counties that advance and succeed. And being a part of the regional collaboration is an extension of that. We are advancing and, and succeeding as a region through collaboration. And granted, there is the immediate benefit of the exchange of ideas, information, and sharing of frustrations. But there's also the benefit of, 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 of having a, a a coming together, if you will, of all of the uh, economic development organizations uh, in a regional way. And it is also designed to, um, to maintain our competitive position or advance our competitive position in the region to compete with Northern Virginia. Um, that is critically uh, important and it is through uh, alliances like this, it is through the collaboration efforts that we're able to organize, organize ourselves in a way so that we can compete regionally and, and that we're not disjointed and that we understand each other's assets and we understand uh, each other's uh, approach to economic development. We understand each other's challenges and finding and meeting that common ground and being able to talk about that and express that regionally in a competitive manner um, against Northern Virginia, for example, is a major benefit to us all. And so, yes, I would certainly recommend men th um, that regional uh, collaboration is a best practice in economic development. And locally in Southern Maryland, we do collaborate uh, regionally as well with uh, Calvert County and uh, St. Mary's. And we have been having um, bi-weekly calls and, and week, well, weekly calls then turn into bi-weekly calls, but no, nonetheless, we have that uh, collaboration as well. And we receive the same benefits from that because even at, at the Southern Maryland sort of region, if you look at it in, in that isolation, just Southern Maryland in particular, um, we, we have to, as as Southern Maryland, we have to understand better how as a Southern region we um, collaborate and how we compete even within the state of Maryland. And so as well as outside the state of Maryland. And so the collaboration uh, as a concept is, is again to be repetitive is a best practice. There are lots of benefits to be gained from it. And I certainly would highly recommend it. Thank you. Um, Helen, we'll move over to a question for you. Thanks for joining us from Frederick County. Um, each year during Economic Development Week or sometime around that, that time, um, many of the organizations, economic development organizations, and I know Frederick does this, uh, conducts a business appreciation visit. Um, and, and you do other events as well um, around the importance of partnership with your business community. Were you able to do outreach this year, um, given the circumstances of the pandemic? So thanks, Pam, that, that's a great question. So um, the answer is yes, we, we were. It was different. Um, I think that as you heard, we're, we're all talking about how to continue to keep moving economic development forward as we are dealing with um, COVID, um, responses, we still have to keep important pieces of economic development going and an important piece is business retention. So um, before COVID ever um, 
came into our world, we knew we were coming up on our 20th year of Business Appreciation Week. So we had the theme of um, acknowledging our legacy businesses, those businesses who have given um, such an important value to our community for 20 years or more. And um, so COVID happened and just like all of us have figured out how we're going to keep signature projects going in a different way, Frederick County um, leaned heavily on Zoom and we had simultaneous meetings um, with ambassador teams happening over Zoom. Uh, this year, we thought we would go very heavy on marketing. So we partnered with a local radio station, a local newspaper, and a local magazine to really market our legacy businesses. Um, and we thought that our business visit would come, um, you know, maybe some businesses would do it. Many would be way too busy. Of the typical 100 businesses um, we go out to see, we thought maybe we would do 40 Zoom calls. Well, overwhelmingly, we had about 106 businesses ask to meet with us. And that shows how important it is to really communicate, um, particularly now with our business community. So um, we took the information that we learned. We certainly changed up the questions that we ask businesses. Now is not the time to really delve into how many employees do you have, um, you know, kind of a comparison. We really just took businesses where they were and asked them how we could assist them currently. Uh, we had a ton of follow-up that we needed to do. Um, after the meetings because the Zoom meetings were only 30 minutes long and for some businesses they needed more in-depth um, explanations of economic development services. Um, but I feel like now's the right time to be getting a temperature check from local um, um, business community and, and, and finding out um, how your local businesses are doing. PPP is um, phasing out. Uh, we're looking at a winter with some question marks in it. And I think it is our role as economic developers to be able to hear great stories. Um, we certainly heard about some businesses looking to expand, looking to grow. Um, and we heard some stories that weren't so great and we need to be there for them during that time too. It's all about relationship and the good times and the bad. So this group has been great to be able to um, share um, the techniques and tools that we use um, in these times, how, uh, you know, none of us need to recreate the wheel. We can all kind of uh, learn from each other and um, keep moving forward with business retention, business attraction, and the staple pieces that economic development has to offer our business community. Thanks, Helen, and thanks to everybody for being here. We have a, another quick minute left, and before we sign off, I just want to recognize meet a board member, Ebony Stocks, who's with us from Prince George's County and who's been here since the beginning. Ebony, do you want to add anything to what you heard about the experience of the partnership that you've been part of since the beginning? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just say and, and echo what everyone has said around the table that this has been a, a very beneficial um, partnership. Uh, we meet weekly and talk about uh, experiences and best practices. And it's been really significant in this environment of COVID, you know, everyone having to take that shift uh, to help our businesses and come up with new programming. And through this group, being able to, to hear from each other what works, what hasn't worked, um, what they would do differently um, with the next set of programming um, helps us to, to improve and do better um, in each of our jurisdictions. And uh, throughout this process, it, it doesn't, it, there's no competition here. I think we all complement each other. And the focus is how do we help our businesses uh, move forward in a way that is cohesive and efficient 
And um, I think that's really, you know, what I've benefited uh, most from with participating in this group. Thank you. And thanks to everybody. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you all soon, I hope.